Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to do some router work on this nice little fun project. Basically saying, I can only please one person a day. Today isn't your day, and tomorrow doesn't look good either. Just a nice fun project. It's gone recycled pine, which measures in at 16 inches by 11 inches, and it's about an inch thick. This would have started life as a table or a wardrobe. And now we've recycled it. Try and use recycled wood as much as I can, to be honest. As always, we've printed our template off pattern. We've stuck it nicely in place with painter's tape. Turn your woods up to the man, get the best side of it. There's a one knot on here, which I'll show you near the letter P. I've tried to turn it and twist it, but it's still the same. So hopefully we're going to inlay this with either resin or paint. But we'll get a nice bright colour that stands up against a dark knot. So we've stuck that on there. We've got good old fashioned carbon paper for me underneath. And it's just a simple case of drawing round your letters. That way when we take that off, you can use that template over and over and over again. And there's our little bit down there nicely. You can see from that, that's all we need to do our little project today. As always, I like to use CNC bits to do our lines. We're going to remember inset lettering, so we're going to move the inside. If it was outside lettering, outset, we'll move the outer background so the letters will be raised. But we're going to do the inside letters. Like I've just said, we're either going to fill these with resin or we can put our paint in and literally sand over it all and make it nice and sharp. CNC bits, 20, 30 degrees. 15s or 10s, simple eBay, Amazon for me. And you get a lot for, for your money and they work fine. That's all I've ever used really. There is different bits out there. There'll be better bits out there, but they also come with a bigger price tag. So we do all our lines with the CNC bits. These have a 3.175 millimeter shaft, the same size as a Dremel. So they will fit a Dremel no problem if you want to use the router attachment. However, for a quarter inch router shank, you need a adapter collet, 6.135 millimeter, and you simply just slot your CNC bit into the end there, just like so. And then you pop that into your router because it's now got a 6.35 or quarter inch shaft on it, and that will work no problem whatsoever. So we'll set it to a nice depth. I work on three millimeters on all my projects. I made a little gauge like this, basically three millimeters, more or less. I know that one's right because it's just flush with the bit. That one's slightly deeper at four millimeters, but three millimeters is enough for me. With it being resin or paint, it doesn't really matter. Remember when you route out, route out up to the line and up to the line on the inset, obviously outset, up to the line and up to the line. Never route out on the line because there's something that is quite tight here. If you route around that D and around that A on the line, You've just narrowed that gap slightly, so always up to the line. You'll see once we've routed it all out, you still just about make out the pencil line. So we do all that with the CNC bit. For clear out on this one, end milling bits again for me. These are fantastic, and you get a lot for your money. We can get a decent size one, because there's nothing too awkward on this one. Nice yellow one there. Some come with these little coloured barriers on. Some don't. It's exactly the same piece. For some reason, they don't all come on. And I just push that into the same adapter collet up to that little plastic section there, the yellow section. Pop that into the router. We can set it to the same depth on this. Or well, you'll find as I start routing out, I tend to take a little bit of one of the letters out. So when we use this, we can pop that in there and just set it to the same depth. So that's N milling bits to clean out with. Nice CNC, CNC bit, should I say, to all the lines with. Okay, let's start routing this one out.
Right, you can just about see we've gone all the way around the lettering with those CNC bits. Just cut it rightly there. And you can also see we've basically still got all the pencil lines in show. Like I say, I always wrote up to the line if I can help it. If you prefer to go over the line, that's fine. Just remember when you get to these tighter sections, it will make that just slightly different. So always up to the line. If you can help it, there'll be some times when you've touched the line, sometimes you've gone over it, but I wouldn't sweat about it. There's nothing to be concerned about. So that's all our CNC bits done. Next piece now is to remove it all, basically, so we get a nice clear letter like that one and just get the right angle there. I've already took that one out. And you notice I took the dot out on the last one there. There are little depth gauges, we're gonna call them. So when we put the end milling bit up, we can put it on top of that, set it to that depth. Or any of these ones we've took out, there's one there. There's a little section up there. And that's the depth we're going to need to clear it out with. For clearing out purposes. End milling bits for me. Remember, there's different bits out there. Spiral up cups, up cuts, should I say. Just find one that suits you. But for me, little end milling bits are fine. We can afford to go with a nice large one. So I'm going to go in with the biggest one, which is a brown one there. Remember, some do come without these little coloured tags on we're going to call it but they're basically the same so we've took our c and c bit out we slot the end bill a bit up to that little barrier we'll pop that in the router remember and then we'll sit it on top of the e and set it to that depth or we could use our little depth gauge from earlier on right let's get this set up and we'll start clearing this one out Right, we've gone all the way around with those end milling bits. They clean out really nice. The good thing about those, they basically clean the bottom section as well as the side. So you're, you're left with a, a fairly smooth section in there. You can just about see that. And my next stage for me is just to give it a general tidy up. There's little bits in here. There might be the odd piece of wood that's maybe just got away on us. So we just need to remove that. Because we are putting resin in or paint, we'll see how the project progresses. Some things alter. It all depends on the mood I'm in when we come to do them. But for me, I like to use one of these flexi cables. Cannot recommend these enough. And they simply attach to your Dremel or router tool, that tool at the other end. And I use just cheap eBay special engraving bits. Get one with a nice flat, flat bottom. And we're just going to go around here. Takes a matter of minutes. Just to clean all those letters out. They do come with different shapes and sizes, should I say. Get nice round ones, flat ones, pointed ones. You get about a packet of 30 for next to nothing. And they're ideal, more for cleaning out for me than actual engraving. So we'll tidy it up now. We'll run over the top with a mouse sander. Just get rid of those pencil lines. We can still see them, even though we use the end millibits. So a general clean up. And then when we come back, we'll decide what the next stage will be. Right, that's enough sanding down and general tidying up for me. You can see from that we've got rid of all our pencil lines now and everything's routed out nicely. So all I need to decide now is how we're going to fill these letters in. I'm going to go for resin. You could paint this if you're not comfortable with resin. Basically just put your black paint in there, let's say. You don't have to be too particular. You can just brush it in. 
a nice sanding off afterwards and that will leave that all nicely crispy with black and then pop a bit of linseed oil on and a bit of spray and you will be finished but i'm going to put resin in this one just to be a little bit different so it's pointless putting anything on now those who watched my previous videos know i would normally have my boiled linseed oil on by now or even a wood dye just to darken this down slightly but to me it seems a bit pointless because once the resin's gone in we are going to slightly overfill all these so we have to sand it all down afterwards so to sand it all down just a bit pointless putting anything on the wood itself normally I'd, i would fill these with resin and just leave, leave them slightly lower than the routed out area just so you can still feel it the same but sometimes we just do things a little bit different so we're going to overfill these and then sand it all flush so it's proper inlaid resin and then we can pop on our linseed oil or whatever just before that some woods and i don't have a lot of issue with pine some woods will bleed into the side walls walls should i say we have routed out you imagine this would be made of straws you can see other grains and that will be all your straws you've cut into those straws now so when you pop your painting it's going to get bleed sucked into the straws and you're just not going to get a nice crispy line I've not had a lot of issues with pine or my cheap fencing wood that I normally use. But to be safe, you can get wood sealers that you basically brush in. And it, once it's dry, it's obviously filled in and sealed all those side walls. Or for me, I'm just going to spray on first tin of varnish you can find. Probably your thing today. It could be yacht varnish, it didn't really matter. And the idea that we just spray this three or four coats, let the varnish get inside those letters. And hopefully it will seal all those side walls and stop our resin from bleeding into them. We hope so anyway. If you wanted to, if it was deep enough, you could just brush on clear resin and that would soak in the same. It's entirely up to you. Everybody has their own little method. But for me, like I say, we're just going to leave it all bare. We'll concentrate on the resin now and then we'll see what it looks like once it's all been sanded down as regards to putting our linseed oil and varnish back on. So few sprays like that we'll let that dry now do another two or three times just to make sure we're getting to all these letters and then hopefully we'll be on to the resin side of things we'll come back when we're ready to pop our resin in right it's resin time you can see from that We've sprayed a little bit of varnish on there. And that's just to seal those letters inside. Hopefully stop some of the resin bleeding into the side walls of the lettering. Like I said previously, I've not had a lot of issues with pine. So the resin for today is Vista One. There's plenty of different resins out there and it's a personal choice of what you need. This is a mix by volume and it's a one-to-one -to, -one to mix. So basically, whatever you put in of A, your resin, you put the same amount of B, your adder. And I like to just get these cheap party plastic cups. They're ideal because they have little marks on the side, like so. So I just count up seven today of A, the resin, and obviously seven of B, the adder. You can do whatever you want. I'd rather mix smaller amounts as we fill it in. We've got plenty of time to mix some more and keep adding instead of mixing a massive cupful and you've just got resin left over. So we'll mix it off camera. It's just same in there, same in there. Mix it all in. And then we'll pop in some acrylic paint. I like to use in mine. There is pigments, powders, inks, dyes. But just acrylic paints for me. What I want to do is start off dark at the bottom and as we come up the project we start adding a little bit of white in and hopefully as we get towards the top we should be somewhere near white in theory anyway so we'll start off with the darker colours at the bottom remember we want to overfill these slightly because we are going to sand it all down so it's proper flush and nicely inlaid normally I would just slightly do it lower than the wood so you could still feel it but sometimes we're just going to fill it and make it flush. So don't worry about any spillages. We want to be overfilled, remember, as resin cures, it will all shrink down slightly on some of your resins. So 
you might think you've got plenty in and when you come back you've got a bit of a dip in it so just make sure we put plenty in right i'll mix this resin up and then we'll come back when we're ready to add the color and fill this one in okay we've mixed our resin up always have your gloves on you want plenty of ventilation and always put a nice mask on so that's nicely mixed it's just a case of getting our colors in now so acrylic paints for me obviously i don't want this much of the darker blue so we can just pop it to one side and we'll just keep adding to that as we go along and hopefully we'll start dark color here and just hopefully get lighter as we go to the top if it's not working out we always have a plan b don't we so that's a bit of resin we're going to mix today with this first batch of the colour. I use these cheap party knife and forks. They're ideal because they have a little lip on the back and that's enough if you want to scoop it out and drop it into your project. So a bit of blue on this one. You don't need a lot. I'll just get you some on there to show you. That's a good starting point. So we can pop that in. We'll mix it around and see what it looks like. If you want a bit darker, just add a bit more in. But don't overdo it with your acrylic paints, because you might just alter the mixture, which might alter your curing. So I'm gonna go a little bit more on there. We're not too bothered, are we? So double bit more in. There we go. Give it a good mix round. And that's it, we're hopefully can start filling this one now. Like I say, I don't want to just pour it out and go right across because there will be a lot of waste resin. And once that's set, it's just a lot more hard work to sand it off. So we can be delicate, but not overly concerned. So if we get our little scoop there. I'm just going to drop that in like that and go along. And if you get bored, you can obviously do it straight from the beaker. First myself, I'll just take my time like this and we can soon get those letters filled in. And you can go back again. You're obviously going to need some more in there, like so. You'll find its own way. If you find it's, it is stiffening up on you, the resin, just get a little, nice little cocktail stick like so. And that will, can help you push it along its way like that okay it's a slow process we've got a lot of letters to fill in so i'll just fill this in as we go along and hopefully come back when it's nicely cured and we'll be heading towards sanding it down for the next date Right, that's it. We've filled them all in. They are all slightly overfilled and it looks a bit messy at this moment in time. But we're definitely not overly concerned about that. Without tilting it on its side to show you and having it all spill out, it's, they've all got a slight doming effect on. And we're hoping when it's cured, there'll still be enough there. Remember, we're gonna sand it all down and make it all proper inlaid. You'll notice here, we just skim over with a lighter as we went along. And that just helps release any bubbles that you find inside. There's also these bigger blow torches. Be a bit careful with these. <laughs> They're a little bit more powerful than those little things. So that's it, that's all we can do for now. So we'll put this to one side, see how it cured. We'll give it a good 48 hours on this one because I want to make sure it's nicely set. It might even be longer We can always be getting on with another project while we're waiting We want it nice and solid and cured because Remember we are going to sand it all down with a belt sander So we don't want any soft resin 
come in out and make a mess of things. And hopefully, when we've sanded it all down, this will all be nice and sharp lettering. And then we can think about putting something on the wood, linseed oil, or we could even just flood coat, the, uh, coat this with resin. But I think we might do a bit of spray on this just to see how it goes out. Okay, we'll come back in a couple of days and see how it looks. Right, it's a good couple of days later. This is all nicely set, hopefully nice and solid. You can see from that, we've still got our overflow. We're going to sand that down and hopefully that will be nice and crisp. Now I have noticed up here, you get those three or four letters there, look. They've actually dipped in slightly. Remember I mentioned about the resin shrinking as it dries on certain resins, I believe. So we've got a slight little dip in there. That's no problem. That's the effect we're looking for. And if you wanted to, you could just fill in your resin nice and steady and get that effect. This obviously saves all the sanding down afterwards. But I want it to be really flush. So it just means those little letters dipping in slightly. We're going to sand that down a little bit more to make them flush. And if we don't get the effect we're after, we can go with a bit of paper just to rough it up. Remember, you're going to lose all your shine, all that lovely shine there. That will all be gone once we start sanding it. But hopefully when we put our spray finish on or resin clear coat, we know for a fact that will bring all that shine back. Right, for sanding purposes, we're going to start with a good belt sander. Resin will clog up your papers fairly quick, so be ready to change them over. So we'll start with that and then once we get towards the end, nice clean piece of paper there and we'll finish off with a little mouse sander. Okay, let's sand this one down and see what we've got. Right, we've sanded that all down. We've managed to get inside those letters, remember, they were slightly lower, so a little bit more effort on those types that have gone a little bit sunken down as if that makes sense but the rest of it no problem whatsoever you will notice like i said on your papers they get quite clogged up excuse me just a quick brush brush that off and you can use that a little bit more to progress and obviously we finished on a little little mouse sander just to make sure we get inside all that and that's it so far so good so we've totally flushed it all down now as you can see from that the next phase, or stage should I say for me, is, you've guessed it, a bit of boiled linseed oil. Now, because we've lost all our lovely shine, you could pour clear resin over the top of this, and that will bring that up really nice again. And just quickly, if you notice, just get into the letters, because we sprayed our varnish on before, we've got no bleeding whatsoever. So they're all still nice and crisp. You probably don't get the best view on this little mobile phone I film from, so what you see is what you get. But we've got no bleeding, remember, because we sealed it all with the varnish before. And so I'm going to put boiled linseed oil on here. I normally put it on with a brush. I'm just going to pour a bit on, use a tissue paper. It will come up nicer on those letters, as you can see from that. You can see how they've come out really nice. They might not be as, as good when the oil dries, but hopefully when we put our spray varnish on top afterwards, we'll get back to the same effect. I'll do all the sides as well, remember, all the way around. We'll let it dry. Quite quick drying is this boiled linseed oil. It doesn't take a lot of drying. It's the first time I put it on like this, to be honest. Just can't find a decent brush today. But you can see from that it's brought it all out nicely and obviously all the sides and get those lovely ends done like that you'll soon see how that alters and that just brings that lovely grain back in the wood don't be concerned about going over the letters it all dries the same just get it put on as sharp as you like and like i say all those sides as well and that will basically could be it so we'll leave this for a couple of hours to dry and then when we come back We'll spray on some nice clear varnish and hopefully this little project will be heading towards the finishing line. Oh, 
Right, that's it. This little project is finished. Now to finish it off, once that linseed oil had dried, I just sprayed on some polyurethane spray, three or four coats of that. That's enough for me. This will be an indoor piece, so we're not overly concerned about putting too much protection on. We just like a nice, nice little shine on it. And you can all see from that, we've got a nice little shine going. We've done the sides. For hanging purposes, I literally just routed out a slit in the back. That's plenty deep enough is that wood. So we've gone all the way through nearly, and that's plenty for hanging with. And that's it. This little project is finished. Now, personally myself, I don't know if I'm too happy with the colours going darker on the way down. I think it might have been nicer as one solid piece. But we try different things. And that's what we've ended up with. And you can see from that, we've got no bleeding at all in any of those letters. Everything's nice and flush. And this little project, like I say, is finished. So it's 11 inches by 16 inches. We used CNC bits to do the lines with. And then we did all the clear out with end milling bits. We then inlaid it all with resin mixed with acrylic paints. And then a bit of linseed oil, and then we sprayed the whole thing with polyurethane spray varnish just to finish it off. And that's it. Just nice little fun projects. Give it a go. Just enjoy yourselves. Thank you very much for watching.